Heritage in 2000 and we'd spent four years renovating it and um, we all our electricity cut off one night and my wife was two days late with our first daughter pregnant and um, I went upstairs to investigate why the electricity had gone off and found the whole of my first floor filled up with smoke and realised the roof was alight. Basically, we, I went downstairs to get my wife and my dog, and there was only things on the side, the pregnancy notes and the keys, and then we called 999 Fire Brigade, and we just basically got out of the house uh, and went to next door and waited for the Fire Brigade. Well, when crews are 10 thatchers in the rural area, um, it can be a very uh, work-intensive job in the very early stages because there is so much to get done. First of all, we try and ascertain whether it started internally of the property or externally. If it started internally of the property, we'll try and, if we can, attack it like we would a normal house fire by getting crews into the property, get into the loft space and try and deal with it before it causes too much damage to the thatch. If it started externally, we'll then try and do a, more of a sort of two-pronged attack, really get crews onto the roof to strip the thatch off whilst crews are internally trying to stop fire damage internally and start salvaging some of the furniture and personal possessions out of the property. We try to mitigate the amount of water used, but it is quite intensive water-wide to try and prevent the spread to the rest of the roof and potentially adjacent premises as well. We have uh, usually a limited access. The, the loft space is usually only one hatch in an older house, and we may be forced to actually make access points of our own in order to, to rescue the rest of the house. Um, whereas a domestic fire, we probably send two to four fire engines it could be anything from 8 to 10, possibly up to 20 fire engines we have to send because of the amount of workload to, to strip the thatch off the roof to extinguish the fire. We also get, again because of the neighbouring property's difficult access, um, it can affect a whole village and a whole sort of area, the knock-on effect of all the appliances trying to park in small, small locations. The roof itself presents quite a hazard, um, obviously there is a risk of it collapsing. There is rapid fire spread through the thatch house as well, so we have to ensure that we're trying to break the roof in half rig to try and stop it spreading along the length of the roof. The fire affected us in many ways, but we obviously the initial shock, you kind of don't believe it's happening to you. Um, and then we were one of the unfortunate ones that found out we weren't insured due to an admin error. My wife was pregnant so we kind of had something to focus on because we were due the baby two days previous so we had something we had to really focus on and not think about the fact that our house was burnt down and we've lost everything from 20 years and then it was just going the ongoing battle of, of build, rebuilding a house with little or no money really and I'd say probably still to this day it's definitely affected us. My experience of thatch roofs is they're generally uninhabitable for some time so it's a case of the people having to find somewhere else to live. And also it can obviously affect the community. There are, there's an insecure premises now for some time. Um, it may be unsafe for the neighbours to be in the house as well due to structural collapse. Most thatch fires, unless we can get to them very quickly and can deal with the fire, most of the time the thatch roof will be com almost completely destroyed, which has a knock-on effect to the um, occupiers of the homes. We have to, have to find um, places to live while the work's being done. Um, and unlike domestic houses that insurance companies can come in very quickly, get the repairs through planning and get them repaired. The problems you get with thatch, You've got all the heritage issues, which can take a considerable time to um, get the houses rebuilt, rethatched, and get the peoples back into their homes again. Well, the fire was in December, uh, mid-December, and we of uh, 2004, and we moved back in in October 2007. So it was a good best part of three years to get it back together. The fire was caused uh, with a faulty chimney. We had a wood burning stove um, running, it was winter, um, and it was obviously, uh, it wasn't lined correctly, and we had to build up the tar, and it created a, a chimney fire. The most common cause of the thatch fire generally appear to be poorly maintained chimneys. Most recently, the, the most common causes of thatch fires that we've attended are um, people that have had um, wood burners installed with uh, flexible metal flues, 
um, superheating a thatch from underneath. Uh, we do occasionally get stray fireworks on bonfire night or uh, tradesmen work, workmen doing painting, decorating or plumbing in the roof with their blow torches and, and hot works. I think my advice to thatch owners really simply is look at the simple rules that set out by the fire brigade of looking at your wood burner, making sure your chimney's lined correctly, making sure you've got smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms, and basically getting the simple information through to your local brigade. So if in the event you do have a thatch fire, they've got that information to hand when they're dealing with it. I mean, my property, I called them out, and I don't even think initially with a shot we mentioned it was a thatch fire. So X amount of pumps turned up and then they realised it was a thatch fire and then, you know, we had another 15 pumps turn up. Well, it's important when people dial 999, especially if they live in a rural area, that they give us precise locations, try to give us a landmark nearby because the fire service may not always know where every house on their station ground is. If uh, their property is not easily visible from the road, um, sending a member of the family or themselves down to the end of the drive to meet us to give us access details when we arrive. Now obviously telling the, the uh, control operator that the property has got a thatched roof because um, that makes a big difference to the appliances that we send to the incident. It's important that uh, incidents uh, such as thatches that people give us, first of all the information about uh, anyone who may be left in the property still, it's important that we get information about what's most valuable to them in the way of their possessions so that we can salvage them. Access details, so if we have got to go down a narrow lane we can request smaller appliances to attend. Um, if they know where the fire started, how long it's roughly been burning, information like that. Where their services are and how we can isolate those. Um, if they know of any local water supplies, when they know of a, a neighbour that's got a swimming pool or there's a stream or a pond nearby that we can use as a water supply. Thatch owners can actually help to preserve their property and reduce the risk of the fire in their thatch by a, having their, their chimneys regularly swept, by using seasoned firewood um, that is not um, full of tar that they have a, a clean spark arrestor on the top. To reduce the, the uh, risk of fire in their home, they can request a home fire safety visit from us so we can go along and assist them with uh, looking at some of the risks they might not see themselves. Um, ensure they've got working smoke detectors in the property, um, which we recommend to every house owner. Um, in addition to the normal domestic smoke detectors we recommend, putting one in the loft space and if necessary and if possible, try and wire it to one on the first floor landing so they can hear it. Ensuring that if they have any work done to the, a floor or a chimney that the people are pretty certificated and licensed to work on those sort of appliances. I think the most important thing is listen to the fire brigade, get the information from the local authorities or the National Association of Master Thatchers and use your common sense. <laughs>